Pearson. Thank you. Pearson, hey, you got hot in that third quarter. You didn't miss anything. Could you talk about uh, tonight's game and your approach to it since you guys got a couple people missing? Yeah, I think for us, um, you know, the guys missing, guys coming back, obviously with Trey and Sasha. Um, we knew we'd have some different lineups out there, and uh, coach just told everyone just have the green light. You know, shoot, be aggressive. Um, our guards did a good job. Fox did a good job getting to the paint. Delmas spraying the ball out to the perimeter and try to shoot with confidence. Harrison, you guys had a couple of tough losses here. How good does it feel to have to get back in the win column but also sort of get back on track a little bit here? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously not having watched film, but Overall, I felt like we did a lot of things that we want to do in this game coming into it uh, with our approach. Um, mentally, physically, you know, coming out there consistently, I think everyone who checked into the game, you know I mean, did a good job of that. And with guys coming back from injury, I think that's, that's a big confidence boost for guys, you know what I mean, to just get a game out there to feel good. So uh, it, was, it was a good night. Harrison, when Keegan's aggressive on offense, what does that do for, for the rest of you guys out there, especially like he did tonight? I mean, it makes us more dynamic. I think, you know, obviously the way Keegan shoots the ball, um, teams have to guard him a certain type of way. And when he's aggressive, uh, not only shooting the basketball, but getting to the rim, you know, just, you know, imposing his will on the defender, um, it makes us a better team. Harrison, um, the second half, obviously better than the first half. What do you guys, uh, what type of adjustments do you think you made uh, going into the second half? Just trying to be better in our pick and roll defense. Um, I think, you know, some of their guards were getting loose um, in the first half there. So just doing a better job of just trying to show a crowd, communicate on screens, and, um, you know, just trying to make them work a little bit more. Harrison, when you look at the balance scoring from the starters, 24, 25, 17, 24, and the shot distribution, 12, 18, 14, 15, and then Trey had eight, could you speak to what that says about whether the offense is functioning at an extremely uh, high level when you come up with a night like that? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime um, a guy like Malik is not playing, you know, you you can't replace that necessarily. Um, how dynamic he is offensively, his playmaking ability. So we knew coming into this game, we had to do it as a collective. You know, we had to just rely on the pass. Um, we knew it was going to come from somewhere. Um, somebody, you know, getting hot, making shots, but just um, everyone just being ready. And I think just moving forward, um, just kind of having that same mindset of just um, trusting the pass, trusting our movement, um, and just relying on the the offense to create offense for us. Kind of along those lines, HB, is it is it kind of incumbent upon some of those usual faces, those usual suspects, if you will, for you guys to have to step up as opposed to going deeper into the rotation and relying on some of those guys to kind of fill voids? I think it's both. I think it's, uh, one, not trying to do too much, you know, not trying to say, okay, you know, we need to, you know, go out here and try to act out of character, but knowing that, look, you know, we've been a good offensive team, we have a good system for two years now, right? You know, we know what we need to do. We know where we're supposed to be at. And when a guy goes down or, you know, we don't have our usual personnel out there, it's can we still do the same thing? Can we still trust to make the right pass, trust to get into the right spots, make the right cuts at the right screens, things like that. So I think that's, like I said, is the mentality moving forward. Harrison, uh, with, with Malik and Kevin out, how much is it on even you specifically to kind of get back to being maybe the score you were last year or you've this – like maybe the first half of the season, you kind of took a step back a little bit. I think, um, you know, being aggressive, you know, hunting threes is going to be big for us, uh, making sure that, you know, when we have open shots, you know, we take them. Um, both those guys, high-level three-point shooters, you know, you know, catch and shoot and off the bounce. So, you know, just continuing to just, you know, be, be smart but be aggressive, you know, shooting those threes and, you know, continue to open up the paint for, uh, you know, Fox and Domas. Bit of a rocky finish to the month of March with the, the two losses to uh, Dallas, but overall a pretty solid month, especially defensively with defensive improvement. I'm curious your perspective on just this month as a whole and figuring it out with the postseason coming up here. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you try to take a, a long-term view of where things are at and the standings in the last, you know, three games or five games or however you want to look at it, I think the thing for us to focus on is, um, you know, the, the only way is through. Whether that's, you know, we get the sixth seed, whether we get in the playing game, no matter who we see in the first round, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's through. And that's, that's our mentality. That's, that's what we feel like we are. Um, you know, we know that any given night, if we show up and we do things that we're supposed to do, we're going to be in good shape. And um, for these next eight games and, and the games after that, I think that's our focus. And uh, we take this month as the positive steps that we're taking, but we know that we need to continue to get better defensively and taking care of the ball on offense. 
Keegan to start the second half, specifically in that third quarter, you guys just went on an offensive tear. Harrison said it was a lot of that pick and roll defense that worked to offense. But in your perspective, what worked for that third quarter specifically? And then you being aggressive tonight, was that a new mindset for you or just how did you approach tonight's game? Uh, yeah, I mean, the second second half, um, I mean, they got off to a six-star run and call a timeout. Um, so we just, I feel like we all kind of collectively locked in. We found a play, um, a series of plays that worked for us, and we just stuck with that. Um, and for me, just being aggressive, um, just trying to find a balance of being able to distribute the ball, being able to find my shot, things like that. So um, not something I've done much in my career is distributing the ball, so something new. And, kicking, and getting back to that uh, timeout, because it was uh, tied at uh, 58 all, uh, when Coach Brown called that, what, what was said, you know, uh, going into that timeout before you guys went out, went on that 21-2 run? Uh, nothing much was said. Um, I think it was just for us to regroup. We had two uh, defensive breakdowns um, to start the second half. So um, just being able to regroup um, and uh, just figure out a way to win and a way to uh, correct those mistakes. Keegan, I know Mike called that quick timeout in the third, and you guys came out and responded in a big way, especially Harrison Barnes. Just what did you make of what he was able to accomplish in that period, and how much did that lift you guys? Yeah, uh, I mean, we, uh, I feel like every time on the offensive side, we found the open guy. Um, HB was uh, ready when his number was called, and um, I feel like collectively we did a good job of finding the, good, the right um, guy and um, making the extra pass to the, to the open shot. Harrison just shared with us kind of the only way is through mindset, just approaching the remainder um, of this season. I imagine when injuries happen, there's probably initial frustration, but what is the mindset, I guess, of this group, or can you build off of a little bit of what Harrison said with the only way is through mindset? Yeah, I mean, just being able to continue to try and win games. Uh, not everything is going to be perfect um, through every single game. Um, we might not win every single game, but we know that we've played well this season. Um, we've been able to put ourselves in a position uh, to be successful, so we just have to capitalize on those, on those opportunities, um, have the right mindset going into games and things like that. It seems like Harrison's slow-mo Euro could kind of be his signature move. Just how much do you enjoy seeing that, and what do you think makes it so effective? Yeah, uh, I mean, everyone thinks it's a travel just because uh, he holds the, holds the end um, really long. So, uh, I mean, it's an effective move. I see a lot of guys in the league are starting to, uh, starting to figure it out, um, how effective it is. So it's it's definitely frustrating for a defensive player to, to try and guard that. Uh, Keegan, with, with you know the injuries you guys are dealing with, what's, what's it going to take for you guys to, to achieve uh, your goals? And, and what have the conversations been like over the past few days? Have, has anybody really kind of you know stepped up to, to maybe say something really meaningful or impactful to the group? Uh, just perse perseverance, uh, just being able to uh, know that we didn't go through this last year. Um, we, we were really healthy last year um, and things like that. And I think collectively we've done a good job picking each other up. Um, Malik's been obviously around and uh, been a really good guy to be around um, and keeping his head up and things like that. So uh, just collectively, I feel like we're all in good spirits um, and we're just going to move forward. Kagan, you've kind of had ups and downs throughout the season as a scorer, but with Herder and Monk out, how much is it sort of on you and on Harrison to take over and, and be that third and fourth score here from the rest way out? Uh, just continue to be aggressive, um, whether that's um, me just attacking the basket, um, finding the open guy, just being aggressive so other guys can, can feed off of that. Uh, I think that's big, especially when you lose a guy like Malik who's um, able to get a bucket by himself, um, being able to pass the ball like he does. But it's going to take a collective effort with Sasha back, uh, Trey back, um, those guys. Everyone's going to have to step up. Um, it's not just going to be me or HB, but, um, I mean, obviously we're a big part of that. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. A good, good win by our group. I thought, uh, I, I thought defensively, uh, you know, w with them finishing with 34 points in the in the paint and shooting 41 percent from the field, uh, we did a pretty good job. Um, our contests weren't great all the time, and that's how uh, they got free from the the, the three point line a little bit. But uh, overall, uh, a solid job defensively. Uh, against those guys with 22 deflections. I think we won every quarter tonight um, during the game. Uh, a lot of good performances from a lot of guys. You know, uh, 
HB was fantastic, 9 for 12 from the field for 24 points. Uh, Keegan was 10 for 18 for 25 points. Those guys uh, were really, really big on the offense end of the floor for us. Uh, uh, Domas was great. He got the 70th double-double tonight, which is – Again, it's unbelievable, but it's just it's just what he does. So a heck of a job by him. Foxy with the 12 assists. Uh, he was fantastic. And, you know, it was great to have Trey and, and, and Sasha coming off the bench, too, to have the uh, extra bodies with some size and some shooting coming from the bench, too. But uh, I, I, I tell you what, you know, I, I – I, you know, two of the things that I've harped on quite a bit are, are our contests, and, and our contests have gotten better. They weren't great tonight, but they've gotten better. Uh, and our ability to spray the basketball. And we broke the game wide open because in the second half, we had 11 sprays. We were 9 for 11 in sprays. And we could touch the paint, whether it's a guard driving the basketball, Domas catching the, it in the pocket and rolling. It's a matter of whether or not we're going to spray the ball. And uh, we did a heck of a job spraying it, especially in the second half tonight, uh, going 9 for 11. You could see how wide open uh, uh, the guys uh, got looks from in that second half. And that's, that's the difference in the game. We've been defending our behinds all off since the all-star break we get into this rut sometimes where uh where we don't spray it like we should and when we don't we struggle offensively but tonight i, I again that second half that, that was just beautiful basketball we went to the same play over and over again and we touched the paint and we sprayed it and we touched the paint and we sprayed it and you know that, that, those are the types of shots you guys get when you decide to go to the to the gym or to the park you guys just stand out there and you hope somebody will rebound for you and throw you the ball and you guys aren't going to shoot 50 percent but at least, I mean, at least you guys will shoot close to 20 percent which is really good for you guys for me too so I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the same boat I'm in the same boat. I'd be shooting 20% too. So, I, I, okay, I, I'm not messing with you because you, you're scaring me already. <laughs> so, and I said, guys. I didn't say, I didn't say gals. I said, guys. <laughs> so all the dudes in here, you're the exception. <laughs> I'll take 20%, Mike. Honestly. Okay. I'll, I'll take 20%. Uh, pre-game, you talked about your stars stepping up in more ways than just scoring. Correct. 12 assists for Fox, three steals, two blocks. Sure. It's obviously positive impact that has in a game, but what kind of message do you think that sends to the rest of the roster in the locker room, especially when guys need to step up, that Fox is making that kind of an impact in so many areas outside of just scoring the basketball? No, 100%. They, they both have to, and that's what stars do. They make the game easier for everybody else in a lot of different ways especially offensively you know you when you draw two you get off it and 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 if you can get to your sweet spot you finish like you're supposed to especially if it's one-on-one and so I thought both those guys were fantastic playing the game of basketball tonight and contributing in other areas to help us win and making the game easier for their teammates coach you talked on it at the beginning but Trey specifically and Sasha what do you specifically see from them that you, that you like tonight in their return uh, the size just helps, especially on the glass. You know, you got both those guys, whether they come up with it or not, they're battling, they're hitting bodies. Uh, it, it's uh, guys that are used to taking big shots. Um, they both are really, really good three point shooters. And so you got to guard them outside that line so it opens up the floor a little bit more for everybody else. And then defensively, they're just they're going to play their behinds off they're going to try to play the right way and they're going to play very very hard and and you know to have that added depth especially veteran depth uh depth is uh is big for us at this point in the season when you see kind of performances like tonight and you mentioned guys doing more and maybe going deeper into rotations what's the hardest thing to replace the two injuries that you have but maybe more in particular with Malik Monk the way you rely on him well, we, we ran, you know, we do run our offense through Domus, but usually going through Domus, you, we go to somebody through him, if that makes sense. And usually it's the two guys that are injured. And so now we have new guy, we have guys that are cast in new roles um, because we can't rely on Fox to go get 30 every night. We have to have other guys step up. Uh, Keegan has to be able to play make. Uh, for himself and for his team. Uh, Davion has to be able to play make for himself and for his team. And so it's it, it just puts uh, 
added responsibility on other guys because, you know, we went to Malik in, in pick and roll quite a bit, and he made plays, whether it was to dome us in the pocket or finishing at the rim or spraying the ball because uh, he can shoot if you go under. If you, tr if you chase him, he's turning the corner and getting downhill. Same with Kevin, but Kevin was a, a DHO game. If you go under, he's going to stop and shoot behind it. If not, he's going to turn the corner. He can find the pocket or he can spray. So those two guys uh, had, a, had a, a real heavy load in our offense, which allowed us to not have to go to Fox play after play after play after play to score when it comes to playing through Domus on the offense into the floor. With some guys out and others um, coming back, what's the <clears throat> process been like for you to figure out what you want to do rotationally and what lineups you go with? Uh, it's been a little bit of a process, you know, and um, that down the stretch versus a really, really good team uh, in Dallas, uh, our last game, um, we didn't execute well, but part of it is, uh, is on me. And, you know, because usually um, Malik's out there, and if Malik's out there and Fox is out there, they play off each other so well. If we want to do something for Fox, I put the ball in Malik's hands, and now Fox is the two guard, but Malik has been in that position many times, and so he knows how to execute whatever we're trying to get to. Uh, it was new for Keon to have to try to do that down the stretch, uh, and some other guys being in different positions, and we fumbled a couple of offensive sets where we didn't get a great look at the rim, and, and so to go through that uh, against Dallas, uh, starting with me, it made me sit back and say, okay, hey, I got to reevaluate what we're trying to do. Not only that, I got to make sure I communicate it with those guys so that they have a better feel and we can get to our stuff quicker, get better looks. And so uh, it, it's, been, it's been challenging, but I would say that uh, it, it's been great because it, it, it forces us to come up with something to help these guys out ahead of time so that we're all on the same page. And then rotationally, um, you know, it's been a little bit of a challenge because, you know, it's not not necessarily fair to Kessler, but he hadn't played big minutes. So I threw him out there and he played well. You, you know, you just kind of are saying, OK, hey, I, be I believe in this guy. We weren't getting it done with this group. Let's give the next guy an opportunity. And it's kind of what happened tonight. We gave Kessler an opportunity to start. Not that he was bad, but I just felt that maybe going to Sasha in the second half would open things up for us offensively. Coach Brown, you know, at the beginning of the third quarter when uh, Utah came back and tied it up, uh, you called a timeout. Yeah. And uh, it, your players came back. Uh, they hit three straight threes, two of them by Harrison Barnes. What did that tell you about – and you went on a 21-2 run. What did that tell you about how they responded to you after that timeout? You know, our, our guys have done a, a, a great job. They're a resilient group. And even after a tough loss, they've come back – 90% of the time and, and, and play their behinds off and figured out a way to get a win the next time out. And, and it was no different during that time out. We, we, we've been a little flat in the third quarter and in our third quarters. And uh, we talked, we even talked about it. We, we said, hey, our third quarters haven't been great. Let's come out, let's hit first and make sure we're getting stops and getting out and running. And, um, you know, I think we had a turnover or two to start the quarter. Maybe a, uh, maybe we got a bucket. But defensively, I did not like our sense of urgency. And uh, so that's why I took it. And, and I just reminded them that, hey, it's a long game, but we can't let these guys be comfortable. We have to get up in them. And so it starts on the defense end of the floor. And I said, guys, just spray the ball, spray the ball, spray the ball. I promise you. They're going like this when we drive. They're going like this when we hit the pocket. And if we spray the ball, we're going to get easy looks. And uh, those were the two messages that I gave. Our guys went out. They sprayed the ball. HB got wide open looks. And we got stops defensively. And we kept doing it. And that's why we went on a 21-2 to run or whatever it was. Coach, when Keegan was out here a few moments ago, he talked about his three <clears throat> assists. And he talked about, uh, I think he said it's it's different for him being a distributor. Of course, with him, you know, was that tongue in cheek with him? You, you can't tell. But um, could you speak to his potential for growth in that area and also the challenges for him as that uh, aspect of his game expands? Yeah, that's going to be something new for him because 
Last year, again, all he did was catch and shoot for us for the most part and then tried to defend, tried to rebound, and we didn't really you know, talk to him much about touching the paint and spraying it or whatever. Uh, he was a space guy, and, and this year he's shown the ability to score from all three levels. And we tell him, and we, we've been telling him, be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive. Now he's got to find a fine line because he's 6'8", and he can get to his pull-up, his little leaning pull-up against almost anybody. And soon teams are going to start sitting in his lap and rear view challenging, and he's going to have to make a decision, kind of like Fox and Domus to a certain degree. Okay, hey, I drew two. Now i got to get off it. And, and, and that will come in time as a young guy uh, and with his potential, especially with the injuries we have to Malik and, and, and Kevin. Right now I just want him to be aggressive. Um, if you get two on you for sure, spray it. But I'd rather him shoot the ball if he feel like he if he feels like he's got to a spot, uh, than than think. Okay, do I pass? Do I shoot? Do I shoot? Do I pass? No, no, no. Don't think. You if you get to your spot, you shoot it. If not, and you pick your dribble up, go ahead and get off it. But our two guys, Fox and Domas, they've been around long enough where they got to figure it out and they got to make the game easier for everybody else. Mike, uh, <clears throat> Keegan also said that, uh, that Malik's been around and, and in pretty good spirits, and, and he thinks the group collectively is in good spirits. Have you seen like, or heard anything from anyone, Malik or, or anyone else within the group, to kind of, I don't know, give you, make you feel good about, about the team's um, mindset and ability to kind of weather this storm a little bit right now? Yeah, like I, I haven't heard, I haven't felt or seen or heard anything different. So, you know, we're just continuing to move forward. We've been hit with injuries before, and and our attitude has been next man up, and that's what it is this time. And you know, to have Malik, he's one of the most charismatic guys I've been around. To <clears throat> to have him uh, around is, is is awesome because he brings a smile to everybody's face and adds a bit of confidence. But he, as well as myself and everybody else, are confident in the guys that we have in that locker room. And again, you're not replacing Malik. You're not replacing Kev. But uh, our guys still feel pretty good about where we're at and the direction we're going to head to. Thanks, everyone. Thank y'all. Thank you.